I'm George Chandler. I work for Kent County Council in the UK. Um, and we have um, a project um, similar but different to dirt in Germany. Um, I will talk to you today about, um, we call it our observatory project. The engaged title is a bit longer, as you can see on the screen. Um, I'll give you a bit of context about where Kent is, because you're probably all thinking, I don't know where Kent is. Um, so I'll show you that. Um, I'll tell you how quickly or how slowly we did things, um, the process that we adopted, um, what outputs we got, and what we did with them, and how we've taken them forward. Okay, there's Europe. Um, in the UK, bottom right hand corner, just before you get to France, that's Kent. It's in that busy bit, just on the corner of the UK there. So hopefully you can all orientate yourselves as to where Kent is. Um, that's a more detailed map. Top left hand corner, London. Bottom right hand corner, France. Um, I urge you, if you ever go to the UK um, on a Eurostar, do get off and stop. Kent's a nice place. Um, don't just rush through and go to London and then somewhere else. Um, it's worth the trip, I promise you. And for those of you who come to um, the last workshop in Kent, I will take you to some interesting places, I promise you. And I'll feed you and drink you properly. It's good. Okay, um, scope of the project, looking at our data observatory. Population of Kent, 1.5 million people. It is a big place. Um, we have 12 district councils and one unitary authority within our county. I have 313 parish councils. These are the lowest level of local government. Um, separate to that, from the Tilco side, I have 114 telephone exchanges. Um, in all, I'm covering 730,000 premises. So this is a big area. Um, and we have 49,700 postcodes. Um, the reason I've put those statistics up in there is that we have to divide things in different ways in the UK. So we have information on administrative boundaries for parish councils. So the community side comes through parishes. The technical side comes through postcodes. And the government side goes through what we call local lower super output areas which are subsets of the districts. So I have three different ways of chopping the data before we can even start anything. Um, it's very difficult, I have to say. Um, I have two major suppliers, two main telcos in Kent, British Telecom and Virgin Media. So those are the two major suppliers. I have a number of small companies, um, mostly doing local loop unbundling, Subloop unbundling, wireless, um, there's seven of those. Um, and the reason we've got a number of active companies is because we've been putting money into the market and we've stimulated that economy. So we've got a number of telcos who've grown because we've put the cash in. Um, but we now have a major project to roll out broadband across the whole of the county, funded by BD UK, that's Broadband Delivery UK. They are a subset of government, and the project is worth 54 million euros, approximately. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. So our mapping has gone right from the very start to the delivery of the project. OK, this is, um, this is an interesting map. Those of you who know the UK um, think that the South East of the UK is prosperous. It isn't. This map shows um, indexes of multiple deprivation. So this is about socio-economics and poverty. Kent is the section on the right. You can just see that. And there's a lot of dark blue in there. This is the 20% most deprived households in the South East. Kent is actually socio-economically very deprived. Um, one in five rural households are officially below the poverty line in the UK. So we do have 
quite a significant economic problem in Kent. Still a nice place to come though. Just stop. Please do. Um, this shows you the, the background of some of these maps I've put up as parish councils, some I've put up as exchanges, and some I've put up as districts to show you the differences and how we cut the data. This one shows you district councils with parishes in there and shows the density of the population. So you can see we've got a number of medium-sized towns and quite a large rural area. So the darker the colour, the more dense the population. Okay, And that gives you a very broad indication how big the towns are in Kent. They are not big. We don't have any major cities. We have a number of medium-sized and small towns. That means that the urban concentration is not enough for the market to support. So we have a significant issue with broadband providers who will not go into the rural areas and give us broadband. <coughs> okay, let me talk to you about timescales. Back in 2002, we thought we needed to do something. So we identified the need to develop some tools and we found some budget. 2003, we had to think about how we were going to do it. So we were looking at gathering the data, producing maps, and our first data set we produced in 2004. Um, having gathered the data, we thought we should do something with it, not just gather it. So in 2007, we started pumping money into the local economy, into the business sector there. Um, 2009, we reviewed that, we extended the data, um, and then in, earlier this year, we launched our campaign to cope with the Big BD UK programme. So we've moved our data from gathering it, local company stimulation, into a bigger project. Okay. I'll talk about state aid later, maybe. Um, the process, this is the interesting bit. It'll be a test, and there is a spelling mistake somewhere on this slide. Anybody who spots it, hands up. It's good, you'll find it. Um, we collected data, initially at postcode level. So I got 49,748 postcodes. We let the contract to a consultancy. The first contract went to um, Interkai Mondial. They worked for us for three years. Um, the second one went to Rutland Telecom. So we, we, we changed consultancies. We get best, best value for money out of our study work. Um, the Interkai Mondial was, was interesting. They actually tested three telephone lines in every postcode to check the speed. 150,000 tests of speed. Um, that gives us a broad indication. We don't go down to the level of detail that the Germans do. Uh, it gives us a broad indication of where we're going. We look at exchange data. We look at speed. We look at mobiles, local loop unbundlers, mm -hmm. and all the network operators. Um, there's a lot of data in the UK, held in different places, not much of it matches. It's all different. Um, British Telecom have a lot of data that they will not allow anybody to see. Um, earlier this year, a rogue engineer in British Telecom mischievously posted a load of data on Google. Um, an unscrupulous authority might have been monitoring the web and extracted that data. Um, but I'm not unscrupulous, so I won't admit to doing that. Um, but we have data. So, interesting, you need to monitor some of the unofficial channels because you will find information out there. People don't want you to know, but it is useful. Do go for that. Um, we have moved against, uh, we've moved our targets. The first into Kai Mondial process, we actually measured actual speeds. The Rutland Telecom one, it's a theoretical calculation. So we've changed <coughs> from monitoring real speed to a theoretical one. It makes no difference to the mapping. It's close enough. We don't need to be that detailed about it. Um, and what we also do is we track BT announcements on how they're developing their exchanges and rolling out fibre. Um, I'll talk a bit more about that 
in a minute. That's a map of Kent showing broadband coverage. The green, can you see the colours on there? Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, the green is where we've got two megabyte service minimum. The orange is where we have below two megabytes, and the red is where we have nothing. Roughly 256k if you're lucky. So there are some significant areas where we have nothing. Lots of those in the rural areas. Didn't expect you to do that. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> um, British Telecom have market plans to roll out broadband at 24 megabytes in Kent. Those are the green areas shown on this map. The pink areas they might do, the red areas they won't. And you'll see that mostly Kent is covered in red. So the market is not going to deliver to properties in Kent. So I have a major issue where we've got to produce public subsidy. Um, this is the other operator, this is Virgin Media. There's some small green splodges on the map. Um, roughly 40% of the population have got access to Virgin Media, all in the urban areas, nothing in the rural areas at all. And Virgin Media are not interested in expanding. It's only British Telecom. Um, in a number of our exchanges, we have long line lengths. So going for a fibre to the cabinet solution and then rolling out broadband via copper wire along a line seven kilometres in length it's not going to work and those areas show you there where we have lines from the exchanges of more than seven kilometres um, we don't have many I have to say most of the UK is worse than that so we're actually quite tight on that um, and there's some statistics we've got there about exact line lengths number of properties number of postcodes I'll bore you with that um, we also have a public service network. This is something that the County Council has. This is mostly a fibre network and it connects points of presence in local authorities and health, fire, police. We have 1,200 sites connected by that public service network. Um, libraries, schools, museums, universities, um, hospitals, all kinds of places are connected via that system. Um, we're looking into how we could use that to roll out broadband more generally. It's more difficult than we thought, but it's something we need to do. Ideally, I need a separate system that doesn't just rely on British Telecom. If I go for a system that looks at the existing telco and rolls out fibre to the cabinet, I will not get competition in the market and the prices will not be keen. I'm very keen on getting competition. Okay, what did we do with this data when we collected it? Um, first thing we did, we collected the data, we went to BT and we said British Telecom and said, this is rubbish, you need to do better. They ignored us. Um, I suspect that's not an uncommon picture across Europe, frankly. Um, we managed to identify our not spots where we found particularly bad areas and we then identified 19 areas where we pumped money in. Um, workshop this afternoon, I will talk more about those if I'm given time um, and tell you about some of the outcomes of those, including the two that have failed. They're the interesting ones for me. You learn from your failures better than your successes. Um, I have some further five areas which we're looking at superfast projects. Those are in procurement at the moment. And I've got six areas where we're looking at additional grant funding on top of our BDUK project. Um, earlier this year in January, we gathered everything together, drafted a local broadband plan, got that approved by government and released a load of money. Um, and I'll talk about the final 10% areas. Um, this is our 54 million euro project. We are putting in 
24 and a bit million euros between ourselves and the UK government and we expect the telco to provide nearly 30 million euros of their own. Um, if we're going to persuade them to do that, we need evidence of demand. And that's a particularly critical issue. Um, quickly talk about the final 10%. Um, our project, the BDUK project, is to deliver 30 megabytes to 90% of premises in the county. The final 10% is really rural, very difficult, very expensive to cover. Um, this is the cost curve, and you can see there, as you get more rural, the cost just goes straight up. Very difficult to, to address that. That's a very brief um, summary of what we're doing with our major BDUK project, 90% by 2015, um, and two megabytes everywhere. So that's, that's the basic minimum. Interesting to contrast our targets with the German ones. They're not, they're not quite aligned. Um, I think yours is better than ours. That's fine. Um, we launched, um, you're welcome to take these. We launched a demand registration program. Um, we have, I have a QR tag on there. We have a website where we have lots of information. Um, and I encourage people to go on this website and register their demand in a survey. Um, we've been running it since February. I have 16,000 responses now telling me what people want, how much they're prepared to pay, what they think of their current service, lots and lots of detailed questions. Please go on my website, have a look, check out the questions, see what I've missed. If you want to steal any of it, please do. You're very welcome. So. The campaign um, was launched in February. We have a four project stage for the BDUK. We're in the first phase at the moment. So I'm getting ready to procure the service. Um, I will move into contract award probably after Christmas. Implementation next year. Rolls out for two and a half years. And then I evaluate. So by 2015, I will be finished. And we will have fantastic broadband in Kent. That's the detail of my time scales. I, I prepared this presentation two weeks ago. This is now out of date. <laughs> so whenever you prepare these, the time scales move almost immediately. Very, very difficult. Um, but we're looking at around 2013 to 2015 to get the project moving and completed. Um, remember my four stages? I will move those four stages, so procurement will become contract management. Um, I will have to look at compliance monitoring to make sure that we look at state aid clawback <coughs> and issues around there. I've got to go into demand stimulation, which is different to my campaign for demand registration. Demand stimulation is going out into the rural areas, persuading people that they need broadband and that they can use it for different purposes. Um, e-health, um, you can at this moment in Kent renew your library books online, which is very good. Um, we need to do a lot more than that than just basic services. And we are moving um, to being all our services, first stop, digital. No, no personal stuff anymore, all digital. Um, and I'm very keen to be part of the Engage project because if we're going for 90% at 30 megabytes by 2015, I need to go further. I've got to future-proof my network to make sure that in 2020, I can go 100% 30 megabytes or 100% 50 megabytes. We've got to try and make sure that we future-proof our process. Okay, I will show you a couple of maps. This is the <coughs> output from our data. So this needs a little explanation. I apologize for the colors. Um, <coughs> if you look at the key in the bottom right, it says gray, that's the pink bit. And it says white, that's the yellow bit. Gray means that there is one telco 
in that area delivering service at that <coughs> level. White means there is no telco delivering service at that area. Okay, so this is basic broadband, two megabytes, all the yellow areas, nothing. So there's a widespread pattern across the whole of Kent where there is nothing. Okay, this is 25 megabytes. And you'll notice I've got some blue in there, which is black, and some grey, which is pink, and some white, which is yellow. I apologise for the colours. You'll get used to that. Um, the black is where I have two or more telcos offering service. So the market has delivered and you'll notice that's the urban areas. So the urban areas we get high speed broadband, the rural areas big swathes of nothing. So there are some significant areas in Kent where we have nothing to. I have finished. How much time have I taken? Have I been up? I was just listening. Oh, yeah, probably. Um, there's my QR code. For those of you with, with clever phones, you can scan that. It'll take you straight to my website. There's my website address. I've got some publicity around the survey that we produced. Um, hopefully, I've described a bit of a process about how we went through from the initial mapping into our final project. Um, and hopefully, you found that interesting.